This Plusable Talks episode is made possible by Cherry Media, Eiffel, Dreamplay Media, Paco Luca, Moda Media. Welcome to another Plusable Talks episode. I'm Carlos Ferreira and today I have a very special guest. He is a hip-hop legend that impacted and still impacts millions around the world. But right now he's focused on impacting locally as he just became the councilman of the West Ward of the city of Newark. Dupre Kelly. <laughs> What's happening, man? Welcome to Plusable Talks. It's an absolute honor. What an inspiration. What a story. Man, thank you for having me, for real. Appreciate it. When you wake up, do you understand that you, you, your history, you, you're the first hip-hop artist that now transitioned in a very coherent, fair way to a political career tell me a little bit where did that uh, inspiration come from uh, do you feel that you you're a huge reference and you want to impact your community tell me more about that I mean when you, when you have a, a any type of success right success is relative right um, it can be just waking up in the morning you know it can be winning the lottery it could be anything to anyone you know it's relative and I think that all of the things that I put in place that the journey that I went on, the the fighting to become, to see it and you can be it and believe it and you can achieve it, all of those type of things that's associated with success. You know, when you get to that destination, you wanna raise the trophy and raise your arm in victory, but that's short lived. You know, once you get to that destination, you have to travel to another place. You know, and, and I think that the other place for me now is fighting to fight for my community. Now I have to show, now I have to get in the ring and get punched in the face, so to speak. I have to do the work, you know. Um, all of the being the first platinum selling hip hop artist uh, ever elected to an official seat in the United States of America is beautiful, it's historic. You enjoy it because you put in the work but now you have to just do the work. You know, you have to, you can't just stay in that space. And that's what I'm learning, you know, uh, cause uh, constituents in Newark, New Jersey can be very fickle. You know, they'll celebrate you and then they'll be the same ones to pull you down, if, especially if they weren't part of making you become who you are. And what I mean by that is that when you get into that space, you know, celebrate, enjoy, and then get to work do the work don't just live as being the first be the first that has done some things do some more first things when was the last time you did something first for the first time something new for the first time you know and um we have a lot of work to do in the west war so i'm super excited to be able to govern where i grew but we have work to do so i can't live in the space of just celebrating right but you hit the ground running i see you super active the community is all appreciative of, of you you bring a different sense of hope um how do you feel that uh, people are, are receiving you and and these these initiatives um the way that people are receiving me is uh i believe a lot of people who are getting the help who are actually witnessing the work are excited you know they feel like uh trust is being restored they feel like uh presence is powerful they see me there But, you know, even in the music game, you know, we, we sold millions of records. But then there was also millions of people who did not buy it. So, and it's the same thing in the politic world. We, we won by 58% in the vote, you know. And that means we got thousands of votes. But there's also a thousand people who didn't vote for me. So those are the people who I want to win over. Those who are the people who concerns and issues that I want to make sure that we address and we attack so we can rebuild confidence, so we can rebuild unity in our community. And that rhymed too, but that wasn't meant to. But, <laughs> you know, so we can rebuild the unity in our community. And, and that's just being real because the people who are non-believers, you have to make them believers. And the way that you make them believers is by doing the work. Mm -hmm. And how can the community, especially the youth, you've always been been a great student, athletes, you play basketball, mm -hmm. captain the, the baseball team. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I can see that 
uh, raised with a single mom. So like you, you've always had that discipline in you from a very young age. You know, you don't reach certain levels of success, such as yourself, an international superstar, you know, uh, without being really focused and, and determined. Right. 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 So um, you can definitely be a huge inspiration for a lot of these kids that also like to be hip hop artists or sports stars or 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 yeah. doctors or that see in you the, the tenacity and, and you bring this sense of hope. How do you feel that the youth could could be more involved um, with, in this case, the West War? Do you have any programs in place? Because I feel that you could be someone uh, or the perfect person to build the leaders of tomorrow that can just follow your great example. I think the way we get the youth involved is having conversations with them as well and see what interests them. We can no longer just build basketball courts and baseball fields like it was easy for it to do with my peers and my generation and just expect them to come. You know, if a new basketball court or baseball field went up when I was younger, when you know, when I was anywhere from 10 years old to 20 years old, we would run there. You know, but that's no longer because technology has changed that. Social media has changed that. The new way of living life in, in the metaverse, in the meta world, and all of those things have, have an impact on our youth, on our society, and they, in the way that they interact with society and they live out their day-to-day -day lives. So we have to figure out what interests them. And I, and I think that's what, um, what I was good at meaning with the music you know i was good at connecting with the people you and, still are and, and still are you know um i think that by i think that some parents what i tell people is i am what hip-hop looks like growing up right and what i mean by that is that even to the parents who do not understand what hip-hop is or <clears throat> care to like it sometimes the connectivity doesn't mean that you always like it to connect with someone that doesn't mean that you have to like what's going on. It means that you love the situation, you respect the situation, you love the thing or the person that is involved with the thing that is liked. That's unconditional love, right? So I will so parents out there, if your child is playing some future music, the artist's future, and you can't understand what he is saying, but your child is bobbing their head and breaking their neck, dancing and hopping around to it, I think you better understand what Future is talking about or at least fake it. Go in the room and say, hey, what do you listen to? Instead of, turn that noise off. Because what you're doing is you're pushing the youth away when you do that. You know, and youth are, are rebels. As Soon as you push back, push on them, they push back. And it's not always they're pushing in the same motion. They're pushing in the same, they're pushing against your motion. And when you push against someone else's motion, you cause friction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you don't want the friction with your with your youth, with the youth or the youth of the community, and especially your child in your home, in your household, if you're trying to connect with them. So when I say I am hip hop grown up, that means that even if I don't like or do not understand, and usually we don't like something because we don't understand it, you know what I mean? Or it's not in alignment with whatever your beliefs are or who you are at the current moment. You have to align yourself with your youth. You have to align yourself with the children, with the youth of the community. Find out what they need, what they understand, what they have and want to do. And then you utilize your tools as, as an influencer, as somebody that's a... Uh, leads with inspiration, or as a politician, as your local officials. Then you utilize those tools that you have in your power to help the youth uh, bring forth their initiatives to make them better. But it's interesting because when it comes to hip hop or even rock and roll or certain styles of music, there's a certain rebellion associated with, there's a certain conscious of like touching topics that most sometimes don't like to, talk, to touch. There's a lot of rebellion also associated with, with hip hop. But I guess you're, you're, you're bringing that rebellion in a, in, a, in a more, it's transition, like you say, hip hop in a more mature, refined, like fine yeah. wine, mm -hmm. you know, and just under the form of leadership and look at me, I'm a rapper, but I can also be a great community leader and a great politician. 
Right. I, I mean, hip hop is the is the platform and it's the culture. It's not just the music. It's a culture. It's mm -hmm. a way of life. And, and even if you break down the word, right, hip hop, hip is being in the now, being in the know, you know, being cool. We're hip. We're, we're of now. We, we're in the knowing. Hop is a form of movement. So even if you just look at it that way, hip hop, right, it's the now uh, movement. And if it's the now movement, now movements are always youthful. Hip hop for the last 25, maybe 30 years, I mean, arguably, we can say it has been the pop culture. And in my 50 years of living, the pop culture has always moved society forward. You know, it, we, we sell everything from every type of advertisement, from dish detergent to fried chicken to getting elected officials elected. You know, so you have the now movement that is moving everything forward. And if you're not in tune what in tune with what is now, then you're behind, you're lagging, you know, you're slow to catch up. And and it, and and it's nothing wrong with being slow and being a little bit behind because it's a lot of wisdom that that is you know connected with our, our elders, our seniors, the people who we who have lived life and we say have slowed down a little bit. So give them an opportunity to catch up, but but they have to be open and willing to be uh, to understand what's moving forward. And not everything is bad about the pop culture, you know, and no. especially icons like you. It's funny because we also live in a world that in order for, especially this younger generation, and you were talking about the meta world, and yeah. with so much noise, people have to really come up with some extravagant ideas or some use it in a nice way, some others not really when it comes to the younger generation of influencers. <laughs> When we hear sometimes rappers like Kanye West saying that they're going to be the president and all, you know, and you see that there's a lot of that kind of extravagant kind of superstar world. But when I remember going to your dinner and the minute I got there, people are like, this is the Prey Cali. He's a rapper. He's really, really good. Like, but not oh, necessarily rapper. For, he's not. People, of course, know yet you're a le mm -hmm. legend. Or is it the underground? But Thank he was you, like, man. this is, he represents hope. Nobody was like, oh, another rapper trying to be cool. No. Right. You know, like from the get go. I guess the message of your campaign and, and the way you carry yourself, yourself, people really, he's a great artist and he's a great leader and we trust him. Like right away, you just, have, you just exude this kind of, you have a good aura about yourself and you've always carried yourself in a very inspirational, you're good to be around, relatable. You you actually you 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 let people and you welcome people and and you hear people actually that active listening like to, oh, like man. you were saying and from the get go even without really knowing what to expect from your speech. Mm -hmm. I knew your hip hop career obviously who doesn't know you, but you are like he's really he got this he's the guy for for the job and work is not a, an easy no. city right <laughs> never has been and yeah. you've always seen it well you grew up here but then you kind of saw because you know traveling the world and playing you've mm -hmm. always have seen it also from as an outsider look as well and now that you're in the field and and fighting for newark did it surprise you thought it's worse than what it was or than what you thought you have a lot of work what are the the main challenges that you think well, you're you're well, about to all, face i, I want to thank my team my publicist publicists and management and for paying you for saying all of that great stuff I oh I, I, I i'll send them my <laughs> send them the, the invoice. invoice all right <laughs> no but I, I really appreciate it man and um <laughs> and uh just say that last question again though in uh, terms of the challenges yeah, the challenges uh, because you know like now it's like it was great hip-hop star first one and now it's like do the work that's right like like we we started that work. conversation now that you're in the field mm -hmm. and that you're hit the, the the ground running what are the the main challenges and hopefully by the end of this conversation uh, how can the community get even more involved? Because I mm -hmm. want to, you know, get to, to that as no, well. So, big. like, what are your your challenges right now, and and what do you f feel that you need to do right now to fix? Well, I think first of all, coming into the game, uh, there's no uh, there's no 
real blueprint for what a councilman is because each one is different. And if if you've never been in a seat before, everybody has the idea of what it really is until you get into the seat. And like I said, every every council person, council member has been different. So, you know, the challenges come with getting acclimated to politics when you're a community person. You know, uh, you can give away food. You can house some people. uh, You can give haircuts. You can give book bags and turkeys away on Thanksgiving. But for me, all of that is a Band-Aid, you know, because you're giving to the community right then for their needs right now. But governing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people is different. You know, it's not about campaigning. Now you have political power. There is a difference from doing stuff from the community, for the community, and from a community engagement standpoint than actually governing and legislation and legislating for the, those groups of people. And, and those differences bring challenges um, because some of the things that you can do by just being engaging the community, you can't really do when you're governing, you know, because you have to be careful of people saying you did this or you did that, you know, so so there's a difference. My The way that I am learning how to govern is to talk to the people, to utilize them to bring forth and then utilize myself, the tools that I am empowered with now, to help them bring forth results and solutions, you know, and I think that if we continue to do it that way, do it together, then there's no blame on the politician, you know, there is no blame on the elected official because these are your ideas. I just put them in the queue to make them happen and utilize the tools that City Hall or your local government had in order for you to make it happen. And then then there is accountability that is kept, accountability on the community side and accountability on the, the political side. And that cohesiveness of doing it together, I think that can bring forth change. So the challenges are are learning how to maneuver through politics. The challenges are dealing with um, residents, different personalities. Off camera, we talked about, you know, how people, all of us have some type of mental uh, disposition that we always deal with and we deal with it in different ways. And that doesn't have to mean like it's a negative thing, you know, but all of us have our own personalities. So when you meet these these residents, you know, you might meet a nice, sweet old lady and then the next house you might meet a sweet, mean old lady, (laughs) you know. But all of them have valid points, have valid concerns, valid issues that they want to discuss. And, and some of them just want to be heard. Some, some of them just want to know that you're being attentive and that you care about them living in a community. So the challenges really are, are not real challenges. The challenges is to hear the constituent, hear the resident, let them know that they've been heard. But even more so than listening and communicating, it's about the comprehension of that communication between, you know, the elected official and, and the person that's being served. And what do you think that your constituents can expect from you? Well, they can expect for, for me to be present. They can expect for me to be an ear, to hear. They can expect for me to abate any issue or concern that I can, that I can do legally and ethically in my power. Um, they can expect me to fight for them. Um, fight for the West Ward when it comes to my other council members and in the council chambers uh, so that the West Ward gets its just due. And, and what I mean by that is the things that we need to help revitalize our communities from the businesses, from the nonprofit organizations, from the stakeholders in the community, from the residents in the community, from our youth by creating programs and initiatives, um, by utilizing the things that are, that are at our uh disposal and what I mean by that is our cultural centers, our youth centers, our faith based organizations, our church utilize each other so that we even know that we are next to each other. Someone said to me before, how many friends just in random conversation, they said, How many friends do you have around the world? I said, a a few. They said, How many friends how many of those friends have you met on the plane? I said, maybe a couple. He was like, only a couple? He's like, all of these years you've been traveling, only a couple? I said, yeah, only a couple. He said, 
he said, well, well, do you have conversations with them? I said, not really. He said, wait a minute. Do you fly in first class a lot? I said, sometimes, yes. He said, so you don't speak to the people that you sit next to in first class? If they're in first class, it probably means something to somebody somewhere. And, and, and even if they're just sitting next to him in the airport. And I'm trying to figure out where he's going. And I said, well, so what do you mean? He said, when you have conversations with people, you open it up to build a rapport and a relationship with these people who are from different places around the world that you might not have ever met if it wasn't for this airplane, you know? And I said, wow, okay. That's the same thing in the community. We live right around the corner from some people for 10 years, 15 years, and we do not even know them. We, we don't even know the man's name at the store that we shop at every day or vice versa. If you own a bodega or a store or a business in a community and you don't know the people who come into your store by name, then I think that's a disconnect. So one thing that they can expect from me is not to be disconnected to connect with the people in the community because when you're closer to the people in pain you can understand them better and and better address their situations and also that global experience that you've gathered throughout the years of performing in multiple countries you don't even know how many countries you visited Man. right Oof. Tens of twenties of countries, right? So know, that tens of times leading and dealing with different different cultures as well, that are all united by this hip hop culture, and in this case, the lords of uh, the underground. Yes, you also feel that that knowledge and experience can help you. You know that worldly experience can also help you impact uh your your local community and connect with different types of personality most definitely with different coping skills yes i i think that's i think you know i think that hip-hop me as an mc that comes out of the hip-hop culture doing rap music definitely plays a part you know uh presidents and governors and senators and congressmen are emceeing when they're in front of that podium they're galvanizing people from their location, their locale, their their states, their counties, their cities, their municipalities, they're they're talking to them. You know, um, when you hear Obama, he has a rhythm, he has a flow. You know, uh, when when you hear Trump, <laughs> he has a rhythm, he has a flow. Now you can you know some people like certain records and some people like don't like certain other records. So, but my point is, is that when you're in front of those people, you know, you're, you are the MC, you are the master of ceremony. That's all the MC comes from, yeah. you know, and we, we put the, the E in the, you know, we change uh, the spelling of it, you know what I'm saying? But to E-M-C-E-E, -E -E, but it comes from MC, the letters M and the letter C you know master of ceremony and that's what politicians do to get their message out that's all music is is messaging that's how hip-hop started speaking to melly mel with the message yeah, and courage too yes because i have to be there in front of thousands millions of people right and and then the more people that want to hear your message the more successful you become and and in the same thing with with politics the more people who believe and understand your message and get to hear your message, probably the higher you will go because the more people that you can galvanize and the more people that you can bring to, uh, to do right or to move your message forward or to move that thing forward, to help people to move forward, then they're probably going to ask you to go higher and higher on the political, on the political platforms. You... You started at a time that internet wasn't around, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the idea of looking at hip hop stars such as yourself was like a very distant one, like Naughty by Nature, all these legends, you know, and uh, Randy MC, although you're slightly younger, but, mm -hmm. but still, you know, like there's now everybody's, it's as if like everybody's just a click away. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's still a layer of a perception. We know people we, or sometimes we know. But what we do know is the perception that we get from those people. So if I were to ask you, who is Dupre Cali? 
and and that answer you you could just go over a little bit of your path here in newark then i know you you studied in north carolina mm -hmm. and how did you shape your personality because i think it's important for people to truly know their leaders you know beyond mm -hmm. the glam and, and all the glory and the huge leader that you are the human level that sometimes people often forget because you're human right you're a star but you're human oh definitely human you know sometimes i thought i was a martian but other that's a whole nother interview but <laughs> no just joking but um, you give me the invoice i'll say I'll yeah <laughs> said a second one just yeah, saying right. <laughs> you know uh i'm i'm a i'm a guy dupre kelly is a guy who's adventurous you know um i think that dupre kelly has has arrived in stages and phases phases of my life you know um when you talk about dupre kelly from five years old to 10 years old you're probably talking about um a uh, very observant young um soaking up like a sponge looking around kind of mischievous but that's just the energy of wanting to be involved you know um but really like a receptacle you know just kind of receiving then you talk about a uh, dupre kelly from 10 to 15 and and starting to feel like I need to, uh, that Dupre Kelly wants to show who he is as a teenager, who he is uh, as a young man growing into manhood. So uh, that Dupre Kelly 10 to 15 was a challenger, you know, maybe even a provoker, <laughs> you know. Um, and then you have the 15 to maybe 20 years old know-it-all Dupre Kelly. <laughs> you know, swears I know everything, but that's only because I I delved into trying to educate myself and find out things that wasn't the normal academia version of education. I wanted to learn, and and when I learned, I I went out of my way to learn, so I knew more than my peers, or at least I thought I did at that time. And then uh, the the 20 to 25 year old, Dupre, excuse me, the 18 to maybe 23 Dupre is a millionaire and money didn't come with instructions. And I already thought I was already right. And I made a lot of mistakes, but not knowing I was making mistakes, but I learned. So there was a learning phase. The mistakes I didn't uh, allow to, to hurt me because I realized that they were mistakes. And that's the that's one of the things that we have to do as human beings is realize when we make mistakes and fix them, you know, um, adjust, uh, you know, just kind of realign yourself. And I did that. Uh, and I did that when I, as doing that, you know, the uphill climb is is hard, you know, especially when you've already been up the hill, <laughs> you know, so it's harder to climb back up there. And when you climb, you, you can feel depression, you can feel sadness, you can feel all those things that are weighing on you to pull you back down. But that 25 to 30 year old Dupre Kelly who, who probably went through that a little bit of that uphill climb again, you know, that was him. Then 35 to 40, it was 35 Dupre Kelly, I figured it out. You know, it, it wasn't about none of those things. It wasn't about becoming rich. It wasn't about becoming famous. All of the things that we're taught of making it out of our hood and making it out of poverty. It wasn't about making it out to me anymore. It was about coming back and just giving all of the things that I had already received, give it all away. Give it to the people. Help them become better than who you believe that you are. And once I started doing that and I just started to be a giver, man, the joy that I felt from just being a giver, can't it, no platinum record could ever touch that, you know. And then I started to see the fruit being bared in my life that I didn't even realize was bared in my life before. I thought that fruit was supposed to grow on that tree that way. I, f I thought that those grapes were supposed to grow on that vine that way and supposed to be plenty of you, plentiful for me to eat. I didn't realize that you have to water, that you have to nurture, that you have to dig deep and plant so roots can, roots can go deep and connect. I didn't realize all of that 
until I start being a giver, till I start being a planter, till I start uh, respecting who I already was and not trying to be something that that I thought people should see me as. Perfect. You also went to college in North Carolina. How was conciliating both college with being a hip hop artist? And you're also part of Alpha. Yeah, yeah. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. One yes. nine oh six. Um, college changed my life. You know, um, a brother by the name of Ralph Grant Senior. I had got into some trouble just joyriding in Newark, New Jersey, and uh, I used to hang with his son. And one of his legislators' aides, he was a councilman at the time, one of his legislators' aides was just kind of was my mentor and later became my manager of Laws of the Underground. And he always took me around to, he showed me what community was, he introduced me to Ralph Grant Sr. And Ralph Grant Sr. took a liking to me. And he's the one who came to my aid when I got into trouble, lost my baseball scholarships, and sent me down to Shaw University and it changed my life. And unconsciously, when I think about it now, uh, you know, they say if you see it, you can believe it, you know, um, and to see good people doing good things that you'll probably follow them. I did the same thing with Ralph, um, with Dr. Grant. And what I mean by that is that he sent me to Shaw University. So I went to Shaw University. He pledged Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. He was a councilman. I am now a councilman. And this is from one of my mentors. So I, I think that to all of the youth out there, to all of the people around there, if you have children or if you're around young people, you have to realize that they're watching you. Even if you say, well, I'm not a role model, or take the old Charles Barkley uh, saying, I'm not a role model. That's not true because, you know, when people see you do things, they can learn from you being you, you know, so... Be the best version of yourself. Be the best version of you because uh, people are watching you. And while they're watching you, they are becoming them. So, you know, you have a little of them, you know, a little of yourself in them. Mm -hmm. and, and Ralph Grant, you know, he did that for me. And that requires a lot of responsibility, right? And some people, sometimes certain public figures tend to forget that, that can truly have a... a, a such a tremendous impact mm -hmm. on, on the youth good to see that you're you're really your agenda you know you're very um you're all about giving back to the community uh impacting the youth and using your platform as a rapper but then you know dissecting it and just you know focusing on the truly important things which is giving back inspiring a, a younger generation I, th I think, too, like, whoever you are, even if you're not a rapper, whatever you are, whoever you are, go outside of yourself and acquire knowledge, right? Go outside of your space. Go outside of who you think you are because, like, going back to being uncomfortable, you know, uh, that's where things grow when it's, when it's uncomfortable. So go outside of your space. Go outside of your comfort zone. Go outside of your neighborhood where you're com comfortable. Go outside of your family where you're comfortable and learn other things, learn other ways. Like I said, you don't have to like it, but you, you know, my grandmother used to always tell me, and I think it was a Bible quote, but she would say, uh, uh, go learn from mammon, but come from amongst thee. And I would say, go learn from mammon, but come from amongst thee. What are you talking about? She said, learn their ways, learn how they move, but do not become a part of them. You know, she used to always tell me that at young, and I didn't realize what she meant, and I know what she means now. You know, learn the ways, because once you acquire that knowledge, you can come bring it back to which, where you are and use the best parts to help other people grow. You know, and I think that's what people need to do, is just learn other things, learn things, and come back and just give that information out to the community, give that information out to other people. And it, And it's actually interesting because Newark itself is pretty, pretty diverse as well. If you want to learn different things, you oh, come yeah. to the East Ward to have a different experience. I recently just play. I, I also play, by the way. I'm just not a rapper. Right, right, right. <laughs> not right. a rock star rapper. But I play the drums. I've actually played with, uh, I've opened yeah. up for Naughty by Nature and nice. Rob Bass. That was my most glorious nice. hip-hop moment in, in, my, in my life, touring mm -hmm. with uh, Justina Valentine. 
Right, right. Justina, she was on the carpet with us too. Yeah. Shout out to Justina. Shout out Justina Valentine and and great moments that we spent together while on tour on multiple occasions. Um, but I was just saying that I also played at Swahili Village last week. You know, and it's a yeah. different type of approach. Great Kenya f- f- food from Kenya. Uh, amazing food. That's why. And it's Village. such a charming place. And uh, but but also then you have the Brazilian experience and the Portuguese and, and only also from South America here in the Iron Bound. And, and I feel that more and more all of these words should, you know, get more, you know, I, I think that I, I've worked as a journalist in the East for for quite a while for the Portuguese television. And I felt that, you know, I've, I've done things with, with the city and, and all, but like, it's as if like there's a sense of like segregation here mm-hmm. in New York, mm-hmm. and um, you also as a, as a resident, mm-hmm. and not only a journalist, you also right. bring that kind of hope because you're through music and through art and through sports. It's easy to to connect, you know. Right. Uh, when you're watching the the Olympic games, you don't you don't think of politics or right. the rivalry right. between those countries. You They're don't think just about there it. That's right. Together. Right. 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 And I think there's a similar effect when it comes to to music. I I agree with that. I you agree know? with that. Yeah. So, being a resident of Newark as well, putting myself in the the shoes of certain residents of Newark, at least a, a leader like you, also, and I'm not being paid for this, but it, it's true. <laughs> a leader like you brings me a sense of of hope that. Newark can also be a kid where uh, a place where kids can be kids, where kids could express themselves. If kids want to play, venues for kids to play. If That's kids right. want to skateboard, mm-hmm. do that. Because I feel sometimes like I, I grew up in Portugal and I was privileged enough to, to grow up in Portugal. Portugal. Too, yeah, shout out beautiful, to Portugal. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful country. country. Yeah. Portugal. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and Newark, of course. Definitely. Uh, but I, but sometimes I feel that Newark sometimes is not. Uh, I, I don't see where kids can actually be kids and just goof around and safely or, or, or like freely, not right. even safely, but like freely where, or, you know, and, and I think that you could bring that sense of unity through things that could actually, because you're relatable. You're, you're actually the definition of, of a cool politician. You're like, he's a rapper too. He's really cool. You know, that's what people yeah. say when they talk about you, you know, so that, leaves you definitely in a privileged position to you know as america is so divided you know use newark as an example of of unity Mm -hmm. you know yeah you know i I appreciate that and i think that the people have to understand that and realize that too you know like i spoke about earlier if if you're an elder you can't just yell at the music that your children are listening to because you automatically put them away. You can't uh, yell at the politician and disagree with them just because you don't, it's not usual or it doesn't come packaged in the package you thought it would come in. You know, um, I, I don't even consider myself, or I didn't consider myself a politician. Uh, my crew keeps telling, you know, my team, you can't say that, you know, but I guess I'm the rebel, <laughs> you know, but I, I guess I, the last person who said that made it to president, so I guess you're good. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, I, you know, I try not to say that because, um, right. you know, public service, right? That's what we're here for. And and if you're not about public service, then you're in the wrong field. And and I think that some of the politicians start off that way, and then they get changed by the buildings that are in, they're in, the state buildings, the city halls, and just the, how the, the game is, is maneuvered. You know, I think they get changed by it. So you need good people around you to put that elbow in your ribs and pop you out of your dream. Or or you need that thing in your pocket to show that you, what was that movie? To show that you're dreaming. Memento. Mo- Memento. Uh, Deception. I mean, Inception. Inception. Yeah. Inception. Inception. You know, you need those things to, to bring you back to reality. Because it, at the end of the day, it's reality. You know, there's mothers who who have a hard time feeding their children. There's people, entire families who don't have a home to uh, for shelter. There's there's people who don't have jobs or live b- below the poverty line. You know, and they're they're trying to survive. So we can't get caught up in oh we make great salaries and we're in this golden dome building. No, the people who have nothing. 
put you in that position. So you have to be amongst the people, be present with them, understand the pain that they're going through, and address it. But you have to, you can only address it in the right way if you're close to it. If you're so far away on your pedestal or on your, your high horse, then you're never going to really address it in a way that it needs to be addressed. And, and I think that, that we have to understand that when we say, oh, yeah, the cool politician. Yeah, some people love that. Then some people don't like that because they're not used to it. You know, some people say, I don't want to vote for the rapper. What type of experience does he mm -hmm. has? What what is he going to bring to the community? And all fair questions. But if you l really look at it, who's close to your children right now? Probably rappers. Singers. You know, uh, entertainment, some type of entertainment, arts and culture probably make a can really have an impact on your child. You know, I know if you tell uh, maybe a young daughter, if you're bringing Queen Latifah home or if you're bringing uh, Nicki Minaj home, they're going to go crazy. And if Nicki Minaj was to sit down with that daughter who's having a problem, she probably can have more impact just from a real conversation with that young lady than the young lady's teacher or the, the this politician who is in office. So now that I, you have the best in both worlds with me. So what I'm saying is don't push me away from the community. Utilize me. Utilize me in a way that's different. Understand that, that I am the first, and with the first comes a difference. It comes different things. It comes anew, you know? So I, I'm here for the challenges. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that everything is beautiful. We would love for it to be, but it is more beautiful than it is ugly. So... Let's continue to work. Let's continue to work the magic and, and do what we need to do to help our communities. Newark is in silos. You have the East Ward, you know, you have the Central Ward, and you, you have the North Ward, the South Ward, and the West Ward. We have to understand that this is a little big city, and connectivity is very important. But how do we bring everybody together, you know? Is it a... a, a award baseball game is it award basketball game is it something that puts competition uh anebo I'm, I'm bringing my west ward team to the north ward but see what that does or or uh i'm bringing um silver councilman silver i'm bringing my west ward team to the east ward what that does now that connects people from the west ward who normally wouldn't come down to the to the east ward and people from the east ward who normally wouldn't go to the west ward it puts them in tune with each other because now if i know you and we play games basketball baseball or whatever type of event we do with each other and it puts us in direct communication and contact Anytime that there's beef, anytime that there's a problem, anytime that there's a, a concern, an issue, or a situation, and I see that you're involved in it, I go, oh, no, that's my man. I, I play baseball with him again. So I'm not going to just attack. And you're probably going to do the same thing. If you're rolling with a bunch of guys, nah, nah, leave her alone or leave him alone. I know them from. Yeah. I think that's where it's that music have that, too. Um you're saying in terms of people being somewhat skeptical, some of them, that mm -hmm. you're a rapper. There's also that, of mm -hmm. course. Not yeah. everything is just cool and Danny, because obviously there's skepticism. You know, if you don't have a background in politics, you know, mm -hmm. I, I understand that too. But now that people see the do it all and, and you seem to be a, a person that y you, you let the actions speak Most louder Most than definitely. your words. Yeah. Now that they see you working the way you are, uh, do you see? Do you still feel a certain type of skepticism or more su support versus skepticism, of, because you have that uh, background and and you know you're a rapper too, mm -hmm. or people are like, he's a rapper, but I guess he's he's also he could also be a great leader, you know. Mm -hmm. And rappers are leaders. Jay Z is a huge leader, you yeah. know. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, I feel more support. Yeah. Then I feel disconnect. And, and that's it, right? I, I think, I'll give you an example. If we put something negative on social media right now, we probably get 20,000 views. If I put me crossing an old lady across the street, we probably get 100 views, if that, unless that old lady is somebody very famous. Mm -hmm. You know? So people are attracted to anything that is negative, it, it just screams loud, or they're attracted to the thing that shines the most. So it leaves this thing in the middle that, 
that is good, that is mostly good, that doesn't get the love. So somebody will post a, a, a interview on me or on CBS or ABC and say, look, all he does is interviews, but they won't post me po- giving water out from 8.30 in the morning to 10.30 at night. They won't post me um, at a crime scene talking to families of, of murdered victims. They won't, and at, late at night, they won't, they won't post uh, me giving food to our elders in our communities and sitting there and having conversations with them. They won't post me sitting with the city planner and, and devising ways to revitalize our community and our wards. They won't post that, but they'll post me on VMA, VMA carpet. You know what I mean? Looking offline. Right, right. They'll post me um, with with a Russell Simmons or they'll post me when Dame Dash come to town. But they won't post none of that other stuff, you know. Right. Um, it becomes it, a shallow thing. Right. So so now because the repost of the things that are looks like the partying or looks like the negativity, that gets the most posts. And gets reposted, so it looks like it's the thing that you're just doing. And it probably could have been one or two interviews. And it's 15 to 20 things in the community. But those only got 100 views apiece, and these got 5,000 views apiece. So it looks like it outweighs the work. And I think that's just a challenge of, of letting people know that, you know, no, I'm a real leader. Get, get to know me. And, and I want to lead with the leaders. You know, I know when to I know when to play my position. If I go somewhere with you and it's this is your thing, I don't outshine the master. I, I play my position, you know, and I keep quiet and let you run the point, let you run the floor. And and when it's time for me to speak or whatever you have me there for, Damn. then I proceed. And I think that that in our community we have to let our leaders lead, play the position. If you're a community stakeholder, be that. If you're a block association president, be that. If you're uh, a complainer, I guess that wouldn't work either if we didn't have those. If you're a complainer, I guess they, they play a part as well. But I just like to lead with, with positivity. I don't like to be around the negativity. I utilize it to motivate me. I utilize it as fuel, and I keep on moving. Uh, talking about complainers, and yes, the, they, they keep things in perspective. Uh, you know they could be yeah. good for that, but uh, but the thing is, um, a lot of people complain, but then don't vote, yeah. then don't participate. Yeah. What type of appeal would you give to those people? Um, well, some people you're just not going to appeal to. So if you're wasting your time of trying to overdo it, and let me put it in perspective, because I don't want to say that people are a waste of time, because all people matter, right? But if you are giving to these people and they do not want to receive, they like they say in, in uh, what is it, double A, you know, you, you have to want to get clean to get clean. You have to want, if you're a part of Newark doing its demise, then you should want to be part of its renaissance. Mm-hmm. You understand? You have to want to be involved. I can say, hey, come on, let's let's do this, let's do this. If you don't want to go, I might say, oh man, you didn't, you haven't done nothing. This, no, 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 no. Oh man, your your favorite person gonna be. Uh, uh, when when do I stop letting you waste my time? Because if I keep jumping down off of the platform and the level that I have journeyed to successfully, just to come you, to come come back to get you, then you have pulled me back ba- back to a place that I've already grew from. I have to stick my hand out from that place that I am now. And you have to grab it for me to pull you up. If you do not grab it, you're either not jumping high enough or you just don't want it. Stop wanting people to come back down to the level that a level that they already have come from. You know, I'm not saying that we won't stick our hand down there to pull you up, but you have to stick your hand out. We have to both play a part for for both of us to move to the next level. And that's what the community and the complainers have to do. They have to understand and realize that. And if they don't realize that, they will be left behind until they get that. Yes, that that, that was uh, Dupre between the ages of 18 and 23 oh, yeah. that made the oh, mistake. Oh, yeah, I was a trip. 
<laughs> million but now you actually learn and now you can actually give back to the community mm -hmm. like so many other things that you obviously can give back um speaking of volunteer work and nonprofits and all all of that agenda how can the community help you achieve your goals and help you help themselves well they can first of all they can hit khadijah or heidi at my office which is 973-733-6427 they can subscribe to my website which is dupreykelly.com www.d-u-p-r-e-k-e-l-l-y.com they can just try to get involved um hit me on social media at do it all for newark just like it sounds d-o-i-t-a-l-l -L, the word for f-o-r newark and just hit us up on there um on my personal uh my personal social media which is do it all do which is d-o-i-t-a-l-l-d-u and just reach out if you want to be a part of something you have to go after it if you're waiting for something to come to you then you 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 pro it's probably never going to happen you know you you have to be a go-getter in these that you know kobe kobe bryant was in the gym probably 5 a.m. Practice started at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. He's in the gym at 5 a.m. Practice doesn't start to. So then he has to practice from 1 in the afternoon to 5 in the right. evening. Really intensely. So he worked out by himself from 5 to about 12, took an hour off, went right back to practice at 1 to 5. You know, geniuses and people of greatness they do extraordinary things to get those results if you want something that you've never had you have to do something that you've never done start doing things that you've never done reach out to people call them i want to be involved i want to be associated it will happen if they say and if you look you will find you know you just got you might have to lift up some rocks and jump over some hurdles and you know but if you look you will find seek and you shall find so you know that's how people can do and get involved hit me on those things if you're serious about certain things and reach out and we'll try to help of course and speaking of of, of hope and and inspiration to the whole hip-hop community uh, is there anything that you can reveal as far as the Lords of the Underground? Are you guys working on something, preparing something? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Lords of the Underground, um, we are working on a project. Um, we're working on a project with uh, the Snow Goons who are out of Germany. Um, real dope, you know, real dope beat crew. I, I like them because they, they keep the 90s hip-hop sound alive. And they continue to work with a lot of people who love that sound. So um, we have a project that we're working on right now. We had we titled it, but then we we might change it. But uh, we have some good records on there. I think we need to do a couple of more records. Mr. Funky Man is in Italy right now recording. Shout out to Funk. I spoke to him last night. He was on a yacht smoking cigars. I said, what a beautiful life. I'm here sweating in C City Hall. He's smoking cigars on a yacht in Is Italy. Is he hiring by any chance? Yeah, right? I, I need right. to get a job with him there. <laughs> we and, can all go. And DJ Lord Jazz is, um, you know, he's a great dad. He has two beautiful children, and, uh, one who is an Al Alvin Ellie dancer, and he deals with him. He's shooting a documentary right now in Cleveland. His daughter is shooting a movie in Paris. Uh, he runs, a, a, him and his wife runs a, um, a casting agency. And he just put out an album called Plain Dealer 2, which I'm on. Um, so it's, it's, he's working. And I'm in City Hall fighting for the people. But I, I will tell you that I am, I do have a project called Brenda Sun that's out now on all platforms yours yeah it's my solo project you can check it out and uh i am starting to feel the writing bug again though you know i write from experiences i feel like uh my experience tank is starting to fill up in the writing um you should have a bunch of experiences yeah, to yeah. talk about I'm, I'm going about this process a little different too um i'm kind of taking the experiences and putting a title to them and I'm naming the song that. So right now I have like two song titles written down. But when I start doing that, I get into the flow. You know, I just don't want to rush it. 
And uh, but we are working on myself, the mayor, um, Brick City Peace Collective, Office of Violence and Prevention, uh, Tatanisha Harrell, Jerry Wonder. We are working on a project where we took 11 um, youth who are in the mar arts and culture, singers, rappers, and we took them and we put them into a, a million dollar studio with Jerry Wonder, five time Grammy Award winner. Um, and we put them in a real setting and had them write and create songs professionally with videos, with shows. And just to see, these are the children or the youth who were so-called in the mess, right? And we took them out of the mess and put them in a situation where they get to express themselves in the full capabilities of giving them all of the supplies and the things that they really need to do that. And it's changing their life, you know, just to hear the stories, just to hear them and look at their face and look at the joy in their face. It's amazing. And I want to shout out Raz Baraka, Mayor Raz Baraka for that, for, for believing that this is something that we can do. We can meet our youth where they are through arts and culture. And the album is amazing, amazing. So I'm on a project. The mayor's on the project. But most importantly, we have 11 artists who are from the city of Newark on the project who have been kept out of harm's way. And it's called The Other Side of Newark. Where could we find more information? Well, it's called The Other Side of Newark, and everything is being put together right now. The records have been finished. Um, they're probably going to start being mixed and mastered. mastered. And, you know, and it was a full documentary every day. We had cameras in the studio. And so it's going to be definitely something to look out for. And I guarantee you that other cities might follow the, the Newark lead. Just like Ken Gibson said, you know, uh, back in the day, uh, as Newark goes, so does the nation. So this yeah. is something that other cities will follow. Good, great. Um, in terms of the younger generation of rappers, do you see that the the movement here in, in Newark is uh, alive and, and kicking? Most definitely. Like I said, we have 11 of the young rappers and singers on this project, all from the West Ward, South Ward, East Ward. Uh, might be a couple from a central ward, but most of the wards are all represented. Um, and even the people who are not on this album, we have concerts like 24 Hours of Peace um, that you get local talents who get to perform with, you know, on sets that are hosted by Queen Latifah, you know, on sets that you have Fabulous on, on sets that you have Fabio on, and all of these popular rappers. So it gives them an opportunity to shine in their community. Newark is, is a huge tradition of great talent and rappers. So uh, I guess it's time for more and more more people to know and and to to see how vibrant and and really interesting the the city the city truly is. Yeah. And definitely. I and I salute you for 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 really trying to give back to the community for being such a regardless of politics or anything. I think you're you're just a very decent human being that can definitely in, impact the, the community in, in a way that the youth can truly, truly connect. Thank you. Man. Is there any topic that I didn't cover that you'd like to, to share here, that you'd like to, something that you're preparing, that you'd like to send a message to the community? Um, Now is the time. I, I guess, you know, uh, just thank you for everybody that support me and the people who don't support me. Um, I thank you too. Uh, and I thank you because I'm still your councilman as well in the West War, you know. Uh, so we have to work together. If you truly want better, if you truly want uh, things to happen in the city, in the war, and you want to be a part of it, we can't, we all have to be united. Whether you voted for me or not, I am still your councilman and I am still here to work with you. Um, and if there's some differences or some things that, that you think that I'm not doing right, Don't hesitate to call my office and let's speak about it. Let's talk about it, you know. Um, so we're working. We're looking to revitalize this, the West Ward, you know, up and down South Front Avenue, up and down Central Avenue, Sanford Avenue, Stuyvesant Avenue, Roseville Avenue, you know, Park Avenue. We're looking to to bring forth greatness out of these wards so we can continue to move our city forward. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.
So you you heard Councilman Dupre Kelly. If you want to play an active role, if you want to see change, be a part of this renaissance. And renaissance men, like he is, but also Newark is changing. And together, we're obviously stronger. Stay tuned for our next episodes and follow our social media here. Plus, we'll talk. Salute.